evening, folks. Dr. Freedom here with you. Time some Dr. News. News from in and around the universe that can only strike you with an amazing amount of insight and cause your head to explode. It can happen. It really could. I really want to thank a lot of the people who are you know, subscribing right now. You know, welcome aboard the Freedom Train as we sail on in the Series 10 and beyond. Um, a lot of weirdness going on right now in the community. A lot of you know, alleged spoilers. And a lot of legend, you know, things going on. The problem is, is this. I got people, you know, saying this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. The problem is, until you've proved yourself credible, I cannot take any damn thing you say for value. I've had people come to me before claiming they're a source, claiming they've been on the inside, and fed me a whole line of bullshit even deeper than your nearest manure pile will ever be. And that's why I have to be very, very careful about where I get information from. So that's why that happens. You, you, I had a guy, like I said, posting all this stuff in the comment box. Yeah, it may turn out to be true, but at the same time, he could be full of shit. You see, that's why you gotta be very careful when you're doing this kind of stuff. It's easy to get lured off. It's easy to go, okay, you know, something you really wanna happen. And somebody goes, it's gonna happen. And your little brain goes, oh yeah, it is it's gonna happen. <laughs> and then next, you know, you're off in the la la land. So that's why you got to be very careful. All right. Before we go into the news, I wanted to talk about douchebag of the week. I know I'm stealing this segment from a certain radio, another podcast, a fellow named Christopher Titus, but I have to share this. This is something I've been sitting on for a few days, but you know what? It doesn't show the person's face, but I want you to see how bad things have gotten. You know, it's in some ways. Now, as you all know, Peter Capaldi stated that he's no longer doing autographs, you know, unless they're dedicated or, you know, at a convention or whatnot, because too many of them are showing up on eBay. Uh, matter of fact, this is what he told Graham Norton. That segment didn't wind up on camera because she was my friend Beef, and he you know, was outside the studio, you know, with his child, asking, you know, if he'd come outside and autograph, and he said no, because they're turning up on eBay. So all you douchebags who went out claiming to be set reporters, and just went out there just so you can score as many autographs as you could. Congratulations. Um, guess what finger I'm holding up in salute to you right now? You know, because I've been standing up for the set reporters left and right, and then we hear this nonsense. It's still going on. But this is douchebag of the week right here. This was outside of the Graham Norton taping. See this right here? This isn't a photo. This isn't something the person wants in the sign. That's the queen. This douche, douche, was offering Capaldi a 20-pound note to sign something for him. Douche. I'm not kidding. Uh, that's not a joke. That's not Photoshop. That was a friend of mine, you know, Beef, took that picture. Was holding a 20-pound note out to get an autograph signed. Please. Peter Capaldi charges a hundred bucks at cons. And you think he's going to sign something for you for a 20 pound note. He's going to take notice of you for a 20 pound note. Hell, I wouldn't even give you a, let's say a, for a 20 pound note. Okay. That's just ridiculous. I, I couldn't believe that happened. I've been sitting on that for a while. And I was like, I, I was like, I gotta say something about that. Cause that was just so low class, but like, let's get into the news. You know, you're probably right now going, you know, Dr. Freedom, get to the point. Oh, that's right. I'm not supposed to do voices because they're not funny. But okay, moving on. This young lady, who I don't, I think that's Earth to Nicole, claims that she was at a nightclub and met Chris Marshall last night, and apparently he is not the next doctor, so there you go. So let me get this straight. You met Chris Marshall in a public forum, in a nightclub, and you expected him to actually give you an honest answer as to whether or not he's the next doctor. Here, let, let's run through the logistics, shall we? Let's go through the whole nine yards as to why this has to be one of the dopiest damn tweets I've ever seen in my life. Ha ha, look at this. Uh, he said to me, no. Let's say Chris Marshall has the job. Let's, theory, let's go to theoretical. As much as I'd love him to have it, I'm not going to, like I said, don't believe it, let's hear it from the beep. Make that a hashtag. It's out there. You think he's going to tell this young lady in a nightclub and hence blow his chances of getting the job 
you know, because chances are there's more than one prospect. And if he did a major error, like, yes, of course I'm the next doctor. <laughs> it would be all over the internet within 24 hours. Chris would be on the job line and the BBC would not be happy. We're talking Cockney ninjas. <laughs> hey, governor, I've got me side swords. You know, we're talking axed. Because chances are, if he did, has signed on, it's if, because a lot of people are assuming he has. If he has, he would have signed a non-disclosure agreement. Therefore, you can piss all this, this away right now. Your, your glory moment's over. You're done. It's over. Even if he was the doctor, he would not be telling you. Moving on. BBC complaints officer went rogue and told fans that there would not be a female Doctor Who. Now, even Girly Letters brought this up. Is there even a real joy in coin to reply to a fan, to reassure them that the doctor would be male. And by the way, who died May Joanne Coyne, head of the BBC? And also, is there even a real person named Joanne Coyne? You see, that's the problem with these kind of articles. We don't know if this is just an exploitive makeup article, or we don't know if this is like dis you know, misdirection. That's the problem. Also, it's a metro. And apparently this also went out like the sun and all stuff like that. So. And they're claiming that a complaint officer for the corporation went rogue and told a fan there would most definitely not be a female doctor. Here's my problem with this story. Let's say Joanne Coyne's a real person, and she decided that she's going to take up dictating BBC hiring policy for their flagship show. Joanne Coyne would be looking for a job this morning, and Joanne Coyne would be lucky if she'd be, uh, let me see, doing shorthand at a local, you know, shorthand at a local bar. Okay, we'll put it that way. We're talking, you would have a black mark on your record the size of the frickin' Eiffel Tower. You would not, you know, you're talking, let me get this straight. You went out and you made a press statement. You made a statement that's going to wind up in the press on behalf of the BBC with no authorization. She'd be lucky to have a job selling pencils on the local street corner. So I really am dubious about this whole complaint officer went rogue and said there's not going to be a female doctor and i really wish everybody would get off their high horse as far as that goes let's get into smile shall we before i go way off on the tangent you're like okay 10 teasers for smile here we go the episode starts about 10 seconds after the previous episode oh we know that ends about 30 seconds into the next you don't steer it you negotiate with it the doctor's mom why do you think i want to see if it's happy He's in about one minute of the episode and only to the to further the ongoing mystery. Could it be? Who needs lose? There's probably an app for that. We're in the utopia of vacuous teens. Jim the fish. Oh, wow. I know somebody who's going to be starting going nuts on that. There's uh, oh, another same sex crush is mentioned and you'll be very surprised at who it involves. So that's your 10 teasers for Smile. Let's speak more of that. Oh, yeah, by the way, the pilot scored an AI of 83, which is not, you know, pretty good. It's not horrible, but still, I was hoping for a lot better. I really was. I was hoping for at least, look at this. This thing got 87, you know, uh, screw that. But 83 is considered a good score, but it's roughly similar to scores achieved by the last series of the show. I was really hoping for higher on the AI. Overnight Australians were 495,000 viewers in the five major capital cities. That made it the second highest rating drama of the day and the eighth highest rating program of the day overall. Remember, these do not include iView, regional, or time shifted viewers. So we're going to probably be getting a number on that again later. Okay, Knock Knock, written by Mike Bartlett, directed by Bill Anderson. We'll be getting a special binaural audio edition of this episode. will be available on the BBC iPlayer immediately after its broadcast on TV. It creates a 3D surround of sound effect for anyone wearing headphones and placing them at the heart of the action in this nail biting episode. So, so real, some weird stuff's going to be going on. And knock, knock, as you can tell right there. My goodness. It's like, oh, that's just, that's creepy. Moving on. New comics coming. Titles out on the 19th. Another was out yesterday. And that's 10th Doctor Year 3, number 4. Out next week, 12th Doctor Year 3, number 2. 9th Doctor, number 12. And that is it for next week. So keep your eyes out on this. Moving on. Uh, they put up production stills for Smile. So if you want to go check these out, just go on and click on any of these, and wham, bam, bam, it should come up. My computer is being a heinous pain in my ass this week. I, like I said, i got to switch to the new system and get it over with. I just keep putting it off. And, by the way, here's a little clip with Peter and Pearl introducing Smile, and here's another one where Stephen Moffat introduces Smile. So you're getting a trifecta right here. Moving on. 
Okay, Thin Ice. This is episode three. Air date, time, and synopsis confirmed. Here we go. In Regency England, beneath the frozen term, something is stirring. The Doctor and Bill arrive at last, at the last of the great frost fairs, and find themselves investigating a string of impossible disappearances. People have been vanishing on the ice. Bill is about to discover that the past is more like her world than she expected, and that not all monsters come from outer space. Oh, goodness. I feel like a game show announcer. Okay, so... Got a little synopsis there for that one, blah, blah, blah. Airtime will be 7.20 p.m. on the 29th of, of April. Moving on. Yes, the return of the Doctor Who's Manasian Siren was a gift to Peter Capaldi from Stephen Moffat. And I'm really hoping there's another little gift in there that you aren't talking about that involves a certain companion. You know, the very first companion? His granddaughter, you know, Stephen? All right. So he's claiming that was a gift to, you know, to Peter. And because he's getting his you know, wish, courtesy, blah, 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 blah. And he's leaving at Christmas. He goes, Peter didn't give me a wish list. He would, he would never do that. But I did give him the Mondesi and Cyberman because he's very keen on those. He claims that he gave Tenet Zygons. Could he claim he always wanted Zygons? And Karen Gillan always wanted to be killed by a weeping angel. Oh, yeah, she wasn't killed. She was just sat back to the past where they created fixed time and some other hokey horse shit I'm not going to go into. I always debate on people about the Angels rate Manhattan, and I always get in trouble about it. Sorry, I, I think it was – we won't go into it. You don't care. All right, moving on. How the characters are turned and Dr. Chris's special could solve the show's first ever plot hole. Now, I really should have put a spoiler warning on this one because they're still saying that, you know, their word is David Bradley is going to be in the Christmas special as the first Doctor, as portrayed by, of course, William Hartnell. And – of course, sources remain non-committal, and but basically, this is a bit of a reader. Like I said, I, I, if you want, I'll let you read this one for yourself as to how it's supposed to tie all this together. The word I'm hearing is is this. You may want to, if you're like this, if you don't want to know. All right, one of the, one story I'm hearing now, and this is off, but the problem is I can't verify this is that Peter's regeneration is going to start as you see him do the eyeball scene in Day of the Doctor. That's allegedly what I'm hearing. It's supposed to come full circle back to that somehow. So maybe the Gallifrey's in the vault story is true. We don't know yet. Okay, Doctor Who Experience is voting for a classic monster restoration. They've done this before, and it's kind of weird why the fritty dee dee fritty dee da frit in hell, they've been spreading the word that the experience is closing this summer, but they want you to do a vote for an exhibit. You know, where you go? They've done this before. It says, all right. Matter of fact, da, 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 da. okay, last year, it was an online public vote with four pairings of monsters of the classic era in need of restoration. On that occasion, the victorious duo were Morbius from the Brain of Morbius, and that's kind of like that Frankenstein's monster damn thing there, and of course, the Mandrel from Nightmare of Eden. I could have lived without the Mandrel. I'm sorry, <laughs> but okay, so the eight monsters announced, okay, for this year. All right, the restoration was carried out, blah, 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 blah. Now, when the experience originally opened, blah, 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 team assisted restoring a number of noble exhibits, including K1 Robot, Vargas the Ice Warrior, Mike, Mike Tucker himself was in attendance at the experience on Saturday, the 15th of April, to launch the next public vote. The eight monsters announced in the vote were the Yeti from Web of Fear, Silurian from Warriors of the Deep, Sea Devil from Warriors of the Deep, Tractator from Frontios, Drathro from the Mind Warp, you know, well, Mind Warp was kind of a weird one. Vervoid from Terror of the Vervoids. Yeah, the vagina faces. The Hemavore from Curse of Fenric and Cheetah Person from Survival. That's pretty interesting because Lisa Bowerman's played a Cheetah Person. All right. So, which monster will, will ultimately triumph? Online voting closes at 5 p.m. on the 5th of May. Voting at the Experience of Cardiff then closes 24 hours later on the 6th of May. The winning monster will be announced a few days later with the fully restored monster revealed in July of 2017. To vote, follow this link right here, and then, of course, you choose from that group up there. All right, moving on. And lastly, guess what? All oh, hoop-dee-ding-dong shit. Tom Rosenthal is now claiming to be the front runner to be the next Doctor Who. What the frelling hell. At this point, like I said, it's going to get at the point that freaking you know, Elmer Fudd is going to be in the competition. And I've already done a photo for that, like, a year and a half ago, and I still pop it up on Twitter every now and then because it's getting just me downright damn silly. All right, so we'll find out one way or another come the summer. 
Okay, so that's all I got for you tonight. Uh, Death Moon 10 is definitely on the way. I'm about halfway done writing it. Uh, this segment's going to be a lot longer than the others because I want to get into what's going on with these crews and advance them a bit more forward than I did in this last, you know, this last bit. So for you folks who are keeping up to it, you folks who are liking it, I really appreciate that. The guys who are doing it appreciate that because we're not doing that for money. We're doing that because we enjoy doing it. And I have a blast putting that together. It's a pain in the butt to write and all that. And it is a really, you know, it's, you know, sound mixing is a bit harder than you think. But then again, at the same time, it makes it a bit easier with the right software. But I want to thank you all who have been liking that. Also, hang on, let's give a mention to this. I, I really want to thank all the people who are involved in this one. Get ready. All right, before we go. This video right here, I had no idea the Steve Moffat of Spoiler that may actually melt your brains video is now up to 36,975 views. I never expected any of my damn videos to go that high and let alone 303 likes. Now, a lot of people are focusing on this. Oh my God, you suck. That's 72 dislikes. Yeah, but I got four times as many likes on this video as I have dislikes. And I want to thank all you folks who are liking it because it really gives me a booster to go on. See, a lot of these I know are just people who wanted me to go out and lay out the entire season, or I didn't say something they wanted me to say, or I, like I said, there's some folks out there who are just really, really freaking impatient and want you to go right on to the subject matter within 10 seconds of the video. I don't do that. Sorry. You know, all the people I know who like my videos are here. They're here with me and they're spreading the word and the freedom train is blowing on through the desert like a bat out of hell on meth. So I want to thank all of you for that. So take care. Ta-ta. Good night. Oh, no, I just blinded you with my head. I'm good.